Hi everybody, today we will talk a lot about new total English upper intermediate uh, on these students books and the unit is connect unit one. Today we're going to talk about family ties. We will learn the past and we will express our opinion and manage a conversation. Look at the photo of the Bona. What do you think they do? I think they're walking at the circus. Now listen to an extract about the Boimer family and answer the questions. So the questions are, how many, how many children are there in the Boimer family? What is special about them? And how do they feel about what they do? How many children are there in the Boimer family? What is special about them? And how do they feel about what they do? So let's start. And now a story about another large family. Being in a large family usually means learning to juggle several tasks at once. Shopping, cleaning, making dinner, helping with homework, bandaging a knee and keeping an eye on the children playing outside. However, in addition to a normal family life, the Boimer family juggle clubs, rings, torches, balls, and anything else they can get their hands on. It all started while Larry Boimer was working as a pipeline worker for Shell Oil. His job took him away from his wife Judy and the four children they had at the time. He had spent his first few weeks sitting in his motel room between shifts, when one day while he was feeling bored, he decided to take up a new hobby. Using a book, he taught himself to juggle. When he had mastered the basics, he went home and showed his children what he could do. Immediately, they wanted to learn too. Larry is a big family man, so he was only too happy about that, and soon the whole family was juggling. Larry and three of the children gave their first family performance at an amusement park, and from there it all went from strength to strength. Now there are four sons and seven daughters in the family and they are the largest family of jugglers in the world working together and performing regularly as a family. As Judy puts it, they didn't plan on all this happening. When the kids saw each other, they picked up on different things. One would do rings, another would do clubs, acrobatics or the unicycle. The following unit, they had everybody doing something. Even Casey, the second son, who was born with only one arm, is a champion juggler in his own right, as well as part of the family troop. Larry insists the children's talents aren't inherited. It's simply a matter of practice and persistence. This is a skill that basically anybody can do. You just have to put your mind to it. It's just that most people who try to learn juggling give up too soon. Each member of the family has a speciality, but they all have to practice a lot. Each member of the family not only takes part in the show, they also help with preparing the costumes, transporting everything, and setting up the show. In the, in the end though, performing in the show makes all the practice and hard work worth it. It's great fun and they all love it. So how many children are there in the Boyner family? What is special about them? How do they feel about what they do? Please stop the video and find the answers in the text. Now listen to the text once again and answer the questions. Why did Larry Bomer start juggling? How did his children become interested in juggling? Where did the family first juggle for a public audience? What is special about Casey Bomer? What does Larry believe about the kill of juggling? Okay. And now a story about another large family. Being in a large family usually means learning to juggle several tasks at once. 
shopping, cleaning, making dinner, helping with homework, bandaging a knee, and keeping an eye on the children playing outside. However, in addition to a normal family life, the Bono family juggle clubs, swings, torches, balls, and anything else they can get their hands on. It all started while Larry Bono was working as a pipeline worker for Shell Oil. His job took him away from his wife, Judy, and the four children they had at the time. He had spent his first few weeks sitting in his motel room between shifts, when one day, while he was feeling bored, he decided to take up a new hobby. Using a book, he taught himself to juggle. When he had mastered the basics, he went home and showed his children what he could do. Immediately, they wanted to learn too. Larry is a big family man, so he was only too happy about that, and soon the whole family was juggling. Larry and three of the children gave their first family performance at an amusement park, and from there it all went from strength to strength. Now there are four sons and seven daughters in the family, and they are the largest family of jugglers in the world, working together and performing regularly as a family. As Judy puts it, they didn't plan on all this happening. When the kids saw each other, they picked up on different things. One would do rings, another would do clubs, acrobatics, or the unicycle. Before they knew it, they had everybody doing something. Even Casey, the second son who was born with only one arm, is a champion juggler in his own right, as well as part of the family troupe. Larry insists the children's talents aren't inherited. It's simply a matter of practice and persistence. This is a skill that basically anybody can do. You just have to put your mind to it. It's just that most people who try to learn juggling give up too soon. Each member of the family has a speciality, but they all have to practice a lot. Each member of the family not only takes part in the show, they also help with preparing the costumes, transporting everything, and setting up the show. In the end, though, performing in the show makes all the practice and hard work worth it. It's great fun, and they all love it. Okay, and now please answer the questions. Why did Larry Bono start juggling? How did his children become interested in juggling? Why did the family first juggle for a public audience? What is special about Casey Bono? What does Larry believe about the kill of juggling? Okay, and now let's discuss together. From what you've heard about Larry Boehme, how would you describe him? What do you think about his appearance or his character? Please stop the video and describe him. What is an argument against doing what the Boehme parents did with their children? Do you agree with this argument? Why or why not? Larry Bomer says his children's talents aren't inherited. It's simply a matter of practice and persistence. How far do you think that is true for different talents? How do you think you would feel about working with a member of your family? Okay, so please stop the video and answer these questions according to what you think. Look at the underlined verbs in the text, which are past simple, past continuous, and past perfect simple. It all started while Larry Bomer was working as a pipeline worker for Shell Oil. His job took him away from his wife Judy and the four children they had at that time. He had spent the first few weeks sitting in his motel room between shifts when one day, while he was feeling bored, he decided to take up a new hobby. Using a book, he taught himself to juggle. 
When he had mastered the basics, he went home and showed his children what he could do. Okay, so the past simple tenses are decided, taught, went, showed. Почему они расположены в тексте последовательно и употреблены во времени past simple? Потому что все, любая цепочка действий, которые происходили друг за другом последовательно, употребляется в обычном прошедшем времени. Decided, taught, went, showed. Past continuous. Was working, was feeling. Два глагола, которые подчеркивают долготу выполнения действия, период выполнения действия. Несмотря на то, что глагол feel, глагол чувств и глагол состояния, мы все равно используем его в past continuous для того, чтобы подчеркнуть, что состояние такое у него затянулось. He was working and he was feeling. Past perfect simple. Had spent, had mastered. Как мы знаем, past perfect в предложении избирается для того, чтобы показать, что какое-то действие предшествовало другому действию в прошлом, то есть случилось ранее. He had spent the first few weeks sitting in his model room between shifts when one day while he was feeling bored, he decided. Сначала он провел несколько недель, а затем он уже решил. When he had mastered the basics, когда он освоил основы, he went home and showed his children what he could do. Только тогда он уже приехал домой и показал своим детям, что он может сделать. Had spent, had mastered. Was working, was feeling. Decided, taught, when shall. Yeah, let's go further. Match the tenses with their definitions. So we used past simple to describe main events in the past. We used past continuous to describe actions that were in progress when the main events happened. And we use past perfect simple to describe events and background information that happened before the main events in the past. Okay, and uh, now it's time to practice. Choose the correct words in italics. When Larry decided to teach himself to juggle, he was living in a motel. It was during that time. He decided when he was living. When Lara decided to teach himself to juggle, his family wanted to learn to juggle too. True. Not before, but just at this period of time. When Lara decided to teach himself to juggle, he had taken a job with Shell Oil. So he worked with Shell before he decided to teach himself to juggle. Another example, when I arrived at the cinema, my friends were waiting by the ticket office. When I arrived at the cinema, the film had started 15 minutes earlier. And when I arrived at the cinema, I bought my ticket as quickly as I could. Okay, let's go further. And now it's your turn. Complete the story with the past simple, the past continuous, or the past perfect tense. Завершим историю, прочитаем и поставим глаголы в необходимое время. Past simple, past continuous, или past perfect tense. Stop the video and do it. Now it's time to speak aloud and complete the sentences. Время поговорить вслух, используя времена past simple, past continuous, past perfect. When I was studying for my exams, when I left my last school, I, or when I had finished my last exam, when I look back at my education, I realized that. So the more examples you give, the better. Чем больше вы дадите примеров из собственной жизни или жизни каких-то, тем лучше. 
So stop the video and uh, complete the sentences. Now walk in pairs and discuss your sentences. And before reading the text, discuss the questions. What are the advantages and disadvantages of being born first, middle or last in a family? And do you think it is good to be an only child? Why or why not? For example, as for me, there are some advantages and some disadvantages of being an only child, because um, the advantages are clearly seen that you are the only child to be loved and you have everything you need, mostly. But the disadvantage is that you don't have anybody and or have nobody to care about to look after, and that's why you are quite selfish. You can be selfish. That's why parents need to take a lot of attention of your being supportive, attentive, and careful. What about you? What do you think about that? And there are four summaries of the text. Read the text and choose the best one, the first one. The text says which type of child it is best to be, firstborn, middleborn, lastborn, or an only child. It gives advice to parents about dealing with each type of child. It describes possible career consequences according to the position in the family. It advises children how to cope with their position in the family. Okay, who comes first? A child, child's place in the family at birth, order may play a role in the type of occupations that will interest him or her as an adult. New research suggests in two related studies, researchers found that only children and uh, to a certain extent firstborn children were more interested in intellectual cognitive careers than later born children. In contrast, later-born children were more interested in both artistic and outdoor-related careers. These results fit into theories that say our place in family, birth order will influence our personality, said Frederick Leon, co-author of the study and professor of psychology at Ohio State University. Parents typically place different demands and have different expectations of children depending on their birth order. For example, parents may be extremely protective of only children and worry about their physical safety. That may be why only children are more likely to show interest in academic pursuits rather than physical or outdoor activities. An only child will tend to get more time and attention from their parents than children with siblings. This will often make them feel special, but the downside is that they may suffer from jealousy and loneliness when friends discuss their brothers and sisters and family life. The first born is an only child until the second child comes along transforming them from being the center of attention to then sharing the care of parents. Parents will also expect them to be responsible and set an example. The change from being the focus of a family may be quite a shock and so shape the firstborn's outlook on life. Therefore, firstborns may try to get back their parents' attention and approval by achieving success in their careers. It is true that firstborns are significantly more often found as political leaders than any other birth order position. Being the youngest in the family can sometimes be a frustrating experience, especially if the child wants to be taken seriously and treated like an adult. 
The last born is more likely than the other birth order positions to take up dangerous spots. This may be a sign of the last born's rebellious trait, a result of being fed up with always being bossed about by everything else in the family. Male children, however, have different issues. Middle child syndrome can mean feeling sandwiched between two other more important people, an older sibling who gets all the rights and is treated like an adult, and a younger sibling who gets all the privileges and is treated like a spoiled child. Middle borns have to learn to get on with older and younger children, and this may contribute to them becoming good negotiators. Of all the birth order positions, they are most careful at dealing with both authority figures and those holding inferior positions. So it says which type of child it is best to be. It gives advice to parents about dealing with a type of child. It describes possible career consequences according to the position in the family. Or it advises children how to cope with their position in the family. What's your answer? Okay, now let's say are these statements true or false and explain why. Only children are first born children. Only children and first-born children often follow similar types of career path. True or false? Parents usually expect different things from their first and last children. True or false? There are no disadvantages of being an only child. True or false? Last born children tend to take more risks as a result of their parents' attitude towards them. True or false? Middle children often get on well with many different types of people. What is your opinion on these statements? Please share and comment. Do you agree? Stop the video and comment them. Now complete the table, then check your answers with the article. So there are nouns and adjectives. Intellect, art, Responsibility, frustration, and skill. Adjectives like jealous, lonely, successful. And let's start. So, jealous, and the noun is jealousy. Lonely, the noun is loneliness. Successful, the noun is success. Well, if the noun is intellect, it can be intellectual. Art, artistic. Responsibility, responsible. Frustration, frustrated. Skill, skillful. Okay, and uh, now, Complete the sentences with the words. For example, let's take sentence five. My brother is interested in hobbies like playing chess, whereas I'm more physical. I think the word is intellectual. For example, my brother is interested in intellectual hobbies like playing chess, whereas I'm more physical. 
Okay, let's go further. Stop the video and do it. Listen to the dialogue. What are they talking about? Do they agree with each other? So I will read it and please listen to the dialogue. What do people talk? What have they talked about? And do you agree with each other? So Anna, how many people are there in your family? Um, there, well, there are three really. I have, I have an older brother. He's about two years older than me and I have a younger brother. And he's about a year and a half younger than me. Um, so you're the middle child then? Yeah, I'm the middle child. A lot of people say that middle children have their worst time. What do you think about that? It's how uh, it depends. Um, I think um, there's, uh, you end up, I suppose, looking up to your older brother as the kind of a leader. You look up to him for guidance. That's quite interesting. I've got an older brother and I definitely don't look up to him. I have an older sister and uh, I don't look for, to her for guidance for sure, no. I think uh, when I was young, I did hear definitely to my older brother year. And your, your older brother does certain things first. First to, to ride a bike, uh, pass a driving test, first to university. Uh, so maybe they get more attention than the middle child. Yeah, I suppose. And I suppose parents kind of spoil the younger children because they've had the toughest with the older children. And then by the time they get to, for me, there's five children in my family. So by the time my parents got to the fifth child, uh, they were kind of ready for her to just let herself go. It's not the experience that, that I had. My parents were quite liberal with. I have one sister who's only a, a year and a bit older than me. And uh, my parents were quite liberal with both of us. And we grew up. All right, you were lucky. Uh, we grew up kind of as friends here, and it was great. I don't know. And uh, did you have lots of, do you think everyone in your family has lots of friends, or is it different depending on which, which... No, I think it's it's quite similar. I suppose my sister maybe has a wider network, and perhaps uh, I have a slightly smaller network, but of very close friends maybe but i don't think it's connected to position in the family at all well, what about only children i mean none of us are only children but no well do you think they need more friends or less friends i don't know about needing friends but i do think that sometimes they they can need a lot of attention i think maybe if they've been the soul yeah but they they're used to the attention exactly I mean, I guess though it depends on how much attention they get. Do all parents give, you know, if they have one child, do they all give them loads of attention or just want the children? Are they quite lonely and do they want more attention? I don't know. I suppose it must, must be the case for some, but I don't know anybody like that. Okay. So we've seen some sentences and uh, we can manage a conversation, find out what someone else thinks. We can ask a direct question. What do you think about that? Or we can reformulate someone's answer into another question. So you are the middle child then? We have heard the answer, I'm the middle child. And we can reformulate, so you are the middle child then. We can interrupt to get uh, our point of view across. We can refer to someone's point and back up with our own example. That's not the experience that I had. Or we can find similarities with someone else's point. I think it's quite similar. And we can support what another person says, comment on someone's point and uh, back up with your own example. Like, that's quite interesting. I've got an older brother and or agree with someone's point. 
I suppose it must be the case for some. Now discuss the statements and use the phrases. The statements are, parents tend to be stricter with their firstborn children. Middle children have the worst time. Youngest children are usually spoiled. Only children tend to be self-sufficient and not need many friends. We are attracted to people who are born in the same position within the family. These are the phrases. Please stop the video and uh, discuss these statements. What do you think about them? Up to now, thank you very much for attention. Hope you've gained some 